Hi guys, I'm John Pham, and today we're going to be talking about a commonly used drug in anesthesia, propofol. If you need to know the dosages of the drug, uh, please refer to the end of the video. Uh, but otherwise, let's get started. So, propofol causes anesthesia and amnesia, but has no analgesic properties. It is commonly used during induction or to maintain anesthesia. Propofol is also frequently used during sedation cases, and it can be especially useful in cases requiring neural monitoring, where uh, volatile anesthetics are not desirable. It has a profound anti-emetic effect, which is uh, most effective when it's infused over a long period, uh, but 10 to 20 milligrams may also be given postoperatively for nausea. So how does propofol work? Well, propofol is an alkyl phenol derivative, making it very lipophilic. This allows it to rapidly diffuse across the blood-brain barrier where it agonizes the beta subunit of the GABA-A receptor. So it's promoting the effect of an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Because it is so lipo lipophilic, it has to be suspended in a lipid solution. This solution is made of soybean oil, glycerol, and egg phosphatide and is related to several side effects of propofol. When administered as a bolus, the onset of propofol is less than a minute. And before we talk about the duration of action, it's important to understand the differences between the distribution half-life and the elimination half-life. So when an initial bolus of propofol is given, there's a high plasma concentration, which is what the brain will see. With time, the drug distributes out to the peripheral tissue and the plasma concentration of the drug uh, starts to fall, even though the overall amount in the body is about the same. This redistrib redistribution of the drug into the peripheral tissue is what terminates the action of propofol and is measured by the distribution half time. The distribution half time of propofol is two to eight minutes, and so propofol's duration of action is short, falling anywhere between five and 10 minutes. The amount of time it takes for the drug to be eliminated from the body, on the other hand, is termed the elimination half time. Propofol's elimination half time is one hour and it's broken down primarily by the liver into inactive metabolites and that's excreted by the kidneys. It's also believed that propofol is uh, metabolized in the lungs and kidneys as well. All right, so let's talk about the major physiologic effects of propofol. So propofol affects many aspects of the central nervous system. Cerebral blood flow, as with most IV anesthetics, except ketamine, is reduced. Uh, cerebral metabolic rate is also reduced. So a reduction in both the cerebral blood flow and the cerebral metabolic rate results in a decrease in intracranial pressure. In regards to the cardiovascular system, Propofol causes a significant reduction in systemic vascular resistance and subsequently hypotension. Cardiac output is reduced due to both a reduction in systemic vascular resistance and at high doses a reduction in cardiac contractility. Myocardial blood flow and oxygen consumption are also reduced. In regards to the lungs, respiratory drive is significantly depressed by propofol and induction doses can cause apnea. Airway reflexes are reduced, which places the patients at risk for aspiration, but uh, this may be actually beneficial in a patient who is laryngospasming. So propofol has many side effects. Um, it has the most significant injection site pain, uh, and this can be reduced by local anesthetics or injecting into a large vein. One in 20,000 patients will have an allergic reaction to propofol. You may consider avoiding propofol in patients with soybean, peanut, or egg allergies, especially if the patient had an anaphylactic reaction to any of these. It should be noted that uh, many patients who have allergies to egg whites um, don't necessarily have allergic reactions to propofol uh, because the primary component, uh, egg phosphatide, is found in egg yolk. Propofol carries a risk of postoperative pancreatitis due to hypertriglyceridemia. And bacteria may grow in propofol, and the recommendation is to not use it after it's been drawn up in a syringe for longer than six to eight hours. Propofol infusion syndrome is a major concern for patients who are on high dose uh, propofol infusions in the ICU. So doses generally greater than 150 to 200 micrograms per kilogram per minute. 
The clinical picture typically presents as bradyarrhythmias, asystole, metabolic acidosis, rhabdomyolysis, and hyperlipidemia. Finally, propofol can rarely cause myoclonus or thrombophlebitis. That's it, guys. If you like this video, uh, make sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.